On today's episode of Live Lean TV, I'm sharing five ways to reduce muscle soreness and improve recovery after a workout. So make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end because the fifth way is something that I've never shared before and the ongoing research is looking really positive. But before I share the five ways, do me a big favor and tap the thumbs up button. This simple action helps grow the Live Lean Nation community. And if you're not yet subscribed, tap the subscribe button with notifications turned on so we can help you live lean 365 days a year. All right, so if you ask fitness enthusiasts what the most important components of training are, you'll probably hear lifting weights, cardio, stretching, and nutrition. Yes, those four components are important for transforming your body. However, we're missing a big one in the form of recovery and reducing inflammation. So even though you're doing your body justice by training with weights and sprinting with intensity, these workouts do create inflammation and aches and pains in the body. Therefore, as live leaners, we must consume the proper foods, supplements, and recover with sufficient sleep and stretching to reduce inflammation and pain. So speaking of inflammation, I wanna first give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked has an at-home test that will show you how much inflammation you have in your body. And if you've been following my journey over the years, you've probably noticed that I've taken a much more data-driven approach to my health. So in previous episodes, I've showed you how I've used Let's Get Checked's at-home test to test my testosterone levels at home, my cortisol levels, to see if I'm deficient in any micronutrients, my cholesterol levels, my triglyceride levels, and my HbA1c blood sugar levels. So today I wanna show you the Let's Get Checked high sensitivity C-reactive protein, which is also known as the CRP test. So C-reactive protein is an inflammatory marker in the blood that is linked to heart disease. So this at-home finger prick test will help you see how much inflammation is in your body. So if you're looking to manage and reduce inflammation, having low levels of C-reactive protein is important. So once you order the at-home test kit online, it shows up at your doorstep a few days later. So the kit provides you with everything you need to easily self-administer the finger prick test. So here's how simple it is to test your C-reactive protein levels at home. You follow the provided easy to follow directions to collect your blood sample in the morning, then simply mail it back in the provided prepaid envelope. You will then receive your results in the secure Let's Get Checked app within two to five days. And if your results come back abnormal, a nurse can reach out to you for support. So here's my CRP test results here. As you can see, I'm in the low, so I am BAM! Good! So like I've said, I've been using Let's Get Checked for over a year to monitor my blood markers. So if you're interested in this at-home C-reactive protein test, the testosterone test, or any other blood test, use the link with a 25% off coupon code, LIVELEAN25. I'll add it to the description below. So with that said, let's jump into it. All right, so why is muscle recovery important? Well, we've become so focused on working out that we often forget that in order to repair and grow our muscles, they need to sufficiently recover. Now, this is especially true for men and women like me who have been consistently working out all the way into their 40s. So first off, let me simplify why recovery is important to living lean. When you exercise, train, and work out, it causes small microscopic tears to your muscles fibers. This muscle damage is why you feel muscle soreness after your workout and this is often called DOMS. So DOMS is short for delayed onset muscle soreness. Now DOMS typically occurs 12 to 24 hours after your workout and can last for up to three days. And if you're like most people, the last thing you want to do when you're experiencing muscle soreness is to work out again. Therefore, you skip the scheduled workouts in your workout program, thus you're not getting results as fast as you should. So even if you have the willpower to get back in the gym, training a sore muscle may lead to poor muscle activation, 
less power, and further decreasing muscle recovery. So this is why speeding up muscle recovery is essential for performance and is often the missing critical component of training for sustainable results well into your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, and your 90s. Yes, you can. So if my muscles are sore, should I just take more days off from training? Well, not necessarily. In fact, as a 42 year old man, I train pretty much every day. However, this does not mean that I'm lifting weights every day. I'm usually in the gym lifting weights four to five days a week, but when I'm not in the gym, I'm still staying active. So you could see me on the court playing basketball, at the track sprinting, playing with my kids in our swimming pool, doing body weight exercises such as pull ups and push ups at home inline skating, walking to get my daily 10,000 steps, and foam rolling and stretching. Now I call this active recovery. All of these physical activities keep my body moving, however I'm not putting major stress on my muscles, thus allowing them to recover. Now you may be asking, but Brad, isn't this overtraining? Well, for some, yes it could be, however for someone that consistently follows these five tips to take care of their body properly, I say no. There's a saying in the training world that goes like this. There is no such thing as overtraining, only under recovery. So with that said, here are the five ways to reduce muscle soreness and improve recovery after a workout. Number one, get seven to eight hours of quality sleep. So when it comes to sleep, focus on quality over quantity. Confused? Don't be. Now, the deepest, most restorative, and best quality sleep has been shown to occur before 11 p.m. So I typically put the kids to bed around 8 p.m., then I fall asleep around sometimes 9, 10, or 11 p.m. And although I used to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning, which I probably should get back to doing, lately I'm usually awake between 6 and 6.30 a.m. So this equals seven to eight hours of sleep. And then in addition to this, Based on the timing of the sleep, it's considered high quality sleep. For example, if you go to bed at 2 a.m. and then you get up at 10 a.m., you're still getting eight hours of sleep. However, due to the timing, it would be considered lower quality sleep. Okay, tip number two, hydrate with water. So there is a strong link between slow recovery and dehydration. So I aim to drink three to four liters of water a day. So how much water should you drink a day? Well, a general water intake recommendation is to aim to drink approximately 0.7 ounces of water per pound of body weight. So since I'm 175 pounds, this would equal 3.6 liters of water per day. All right. Number three, focus on sufficient calories from healthy sources of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. So the more you work out, the more calories your body needs to recover. However, this doesn't mean you can just eat whatever you want. I want you to focus on high quality foods, high in complete proteins that are high in essential amino acids, omega-3 rich fats, and fibrous carbohydrates. So the quality of the calories and the macronutrient breakdown of those calories are also important, especially when it comes to protein. So increasing protein synthesis after your workout is especially important for muscle recovery as lifting weights breaks your muscles down, also known as muscle protein breakdown. And muscle protein synthesis is just a, simply a fancy word for the process of repairing and building new muscle tissue. And you increase protein synthesis by the food you eat throughout the day. So focus on the following healthy sources of complete proteins high in essential amino acids. Whole eggs, grass-fed beef, poultry, so chicken or turkey, and fish, which is like wild salmon, whey protein isolate powder, or egg white protein powder. Now these are the best sources for muscle recovery as they contain a superior amino acid profile that is especially high in leucine. Now leucine is one of the three essential amino acids found in branch chain amino acids, also known as BCAs. And it's considered the most important as it is known to be the sole stimulator of muscle protein synthesis. Also, focus on omega-3 fats, including omega-3 fish oil supplements, because they may help reduce muscle soreness after a workout by lowering inflammation. 
This is why I add a teaspoon of omega-3 fish oil to my post-workout shake. So these foods are filled with the required nutrients to repair and recover your muscles faster. Number four, foam rolling, massages, and low intensity exercise. So foam rolling and massages can help remove waste products after your workouts, which helps reduce muscle soreness and increase muscle recovery. So after my workouts, I usually complete five to 10 minutes of foam rolling, as well as foam rolling any sore muscles the next day. So when foam rolling, the goal is to roll over the entire muscle, then once you find those tight spots, slowly roll it out until the tightness releases. And if you can, I love going for massages. And in a perfect world, I'd go for a daily massage. However, in reality, I'd also take as little as one to two massages a month. And if I'm really sore the next day, I also like to incorporate low intensity body weight exercises and cardio into my muscle recovery. So riding a stationary bike immediately after a tough leg workout or using a rower after a back workout can also help reduce muscle soreness. I find this helps increase blood flow, thus helping reduce muscle soreness. And number five, supplementation. So in addition to employing these four other strategies, supplements may also help reduce muscle soreness and increase recovery. I've already covered the benefits of omega-3 fish oil for reducing inflammation and branched chain amino acids for increasing protein synthesis, but another amino acid that may help speed up muscle recovery and reduce muscle soreness is glutamine. And the last one is more of a natural remedy versus a supplement. However, the ongoing research on muscle recovery is looking really promising. It's called CBD. So what is CBD? Well, CBD is the second most active ingredient in cannabis and comes from the hemp plant. So unlike THC, CBD doesn't give you that high feeling. And a lot of professional athletes are now using CBD for its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties to help reduce muscle soreness and increase recovery so they can continue getting leaner, faster, and stronger. And studies are showing the effectiveness of taking CBD for preventing DOMS, reducing inflammation and joint pain, improving sleep, reducing anxiety, and speeding up your recovery. Although I don't wanna to get too in depth on CBD in this video, let me know in the comments if you want a full video on my thoughts and experiences with CBD and cannabis. In disclosure, I've been using cannabis to manage my anxiety and help me relax for just under two years now. So there you go, Lively Nation. Those were the five ways to reduce muscle soreness and improve recovery after a workout. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching and keep living lean.